Hi guys, how are you? Hi, Hi Rachel. I'm Justin. I'm Luke. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Nice to meet you guys. So to start, I you you already have like this dual aspect, which inherently is very kind of old school and makes me think of Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr just because. But then you have it mixed with like a modern day storyline. What for you guys is the fun of getting to play with like the old timey feel of an actual duel versus like a modern story? I think part of the fun was putting modern guys specifically in the stakes of an old school duel because it's so foreign to them and foreign to us. And it was uh, it was a tradition that was so normalized throughout so much of our history. But um, the idea of two modern guys doing it is so insane. And, uh, you know, that the combination of those two things just spawned a, an interesting kind of adventure story of of these these group of guys trying to handle their problems in a way that, uh, you know, was probably the craziest way to handle it. 100 percent. Also, I mean, not just modern guys, but we're we're both Angelinos. We both live in L.A. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if you know of our reputation in L.A., but we're specifically as a group of people, you know, incredibly, whether you use the term chill or or lazy or <laughs> uh, stoned. But we're frequently not the kind of people that are going to uh, engage in anything. Forget a duel. I mean, getting some of my friends to wear nice clothes to a wedding requires several days of yeah. conversation and fighting. So to, you know, to not only uh, take these guys that, you know, in some ways a reflection of people we know and of ourselves and so on, mm -hmm. good and bad. You know, like, what if just, you know, what if this one time that uh, two, two, especially Venice Beach guys decided to, you know what? This time it's for real. This time we're going to do something. And, you know, that we there's a line that's repeated in the movie, which is, you know, something has to be done. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and that was kind of what we were playing. <laughs> Sorry, there's a really garbage hot. truck outside. It'll come in about five seconds. It's we can okay. keep going. I just wasn't sure if, if it was going to make, you know, mess up your video. <laughs> no, I, I can't hear it. But I, I do like that it's, you know, two dudes are so committed to being like, no, you, you slept with my girlfriend. I'm going to shoot you. Like, this is just what's going to happen. But I also think, you know, it's such a, it's it's broy, but it's just it has to be because it's two dudes who are fighting over something that they can talk about and solve, and they're not. Do you find ha having like little comedies that are those broy, like angry comedies, more fun to get to work with because they are not insane, but it is like inherently just funnier because it's these two dudes who can solve their problems in a much easier way, and they're just not doing it. Well, I would say, I would say like one of the things that I think, I hope kind of bleeds through is it's like, it's definitely like a, a, it's like a buddy comedy, dude comedy, but like one of the things that's like very intentional is like, they're not fully bros. They're kind mm. of, I don't want to say dorks. They're like, they're clearly like, maybe Colin, which is like, don't surprise, maybe he yeah. was on a sports team, but like, he's also a stoner. <laughs> Uh, you know, the guy, uh, Woody, who challenges him to a duel is clearly not a, so like the thing, the thing that we were really trying to do is take like a group of guys who was like, they weren't even on the lacrosse team. If you imagine a high school, they were the middle table where you're like, okay, there's the hipsters, there's the jocks, there's the theater kids, there's those guys. Those are those guys. Yeah. Like, who are they? These are dudes <laughs> who sit over there. I think they go to karaoke nights on Wednesdays. You know, their jobs are pretty, you know, meaningless. They're, 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 they are, you know, the they are so much of the population of, of 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 our lives and so i think the thing that was kind of fun to work with was to lean into those bro like the broy stoner comedies from you know hopefully the 2000s and you know, the stuff we grew up with but then also try and take like those guys trying to dare i say i don't want to say lord of the rings but like you know go on and like an adventure uh, mm -hmm. and then by the way uh, like things happen in real life adventures are in, in real life actually usually very scary yeah a uh, lot of times they're not <laughs> it's not a good idea yeah, going to las vegas is an adventure in which you lose your house you know like uh, and so kind of playing <laughs> with playing with uh, playing with maybe there's a reason that you, we don't do these things anymore yeah yeah and you also have i do like the it's not juxtaposition necessarily but i do like you know you have this modern story, but then you have Patrick Warburton teaching like the rules of dueling just because I'm like, that's Buzz Lightyear. What's he doing? Like, why is he like teaching <laughs> people how to duel? Uh, 
when you guys were writing it, how did you kind of see that character playing out? And was it always kind of like a guy like Patrick Warburton playing that role? It was always, it was always meant to be a, a very odd, I mean, it's meant to be a guy who runs an antique shop that specializes in dueling. So he's not going to be <laughs> very normalized. And, it's out of sunny San Diego. Yeah. So there's, I think there's a few different ways that that character could be played originally. Um, but now that Patrick Warburton has played it, I, it's hard to imagine it done any other way. I think he he fulfilled that role in a way that was so incredible. He's, in my opinion, kind of the heart and soul of the movie, both his his uh, silliness and and how odd he is. Um, but uh, yeah, we definitely didn't have the audacity. Keep in mind, this was completely independent as we were making it and as we we're writing it and everything. So we did we did not know we would even get a we did not to work think, with yeah. uh, actors of the caliber we ended up getting. Um. We we're very lucky that Dylan and Callan are actually like, you know, very, very dear friends of ours in like real life. And was some of the first people I ever saw the script and like immediately signed on. But uh, Patrick joined us, you know, what, a few days before he started yeah. shooting. And it was a really, really one of those. He started, he started auditioning over Zoom. We thought we thought we were we were hopping on the Zoom to convince him to do the movie. Yeah, it was like, wait, what And about two happening? minutes in, he pulled out, he pulled out the script and he started reading through the lines and was and was showing us his character and wanting to see if if he could play the role and Luke and I were just looking at each other trying to not we were obviously already hoping that he would do the movie but we didn't want to give that away too much because then we thought maybe he'd think that we were too desperate or something so yeah. we just kind of leaned into it and we're like I think that's really excellent what you're doing with the character there can you get on a plane in 48 hours <laughs> how quickly can you memorize that yeah no um I think the most important thing about that character like uh for 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 the sake of the for the sake of the film and also Rodolfo kind of fills us in a different way and we try to always have like the dichotomy whether it's Aphrodite and Abby or Woody and Colin like two kind of similar and yet different people is that also it's the it's the it's the older it's the it's the older person who should step in right it is the it's mm -hmm. the voice of experience that should tell you hey fellas come on now trust me when you get to my age none of this matters it's all water on the bridge I've been divorced three times but instead it's like hell yes you guys should. I never did it. You guys should do it. Yeah, yeah I've been waiting my entire life for two young guys to want to have a your, your dad that forces you into the football team. My dad obviously did not do that, but I'm just saying, like, you know, it's the it's the living vicariously through you, and it's I think it's a it's a huge part of uh, both good and bad in uh, in in young men's lives that uh, if given the wrong advice or you know like your mom would say if your if your friends all jump off a bridge would you kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Sadly, a lot of dudes most guys history 100 percent. i mean the entirety of human history is dudes literally being in places they don't want to be doing awful things when you go, what are you doing it's like i don't i don't know i have to patrick warburton told me to and then <laughs> it seems I, it's, i'm it's, here now <laughs> somehow it seemed crazier if i said no <laughs> exactly yeah i'd be well, sitting yeah, at the tiki bar by myself also, also everyone's everyone else is doing it yeah anyway. well yeah that makes perfect sense if patrick warburton tells you do it you just do it doesn't matter what it is you yeah, just do it um, very commanding voice it's yep. deep, deep bear to <laughs> very true but you also you mentioned uh dylan and helen when you guys were showing it to them as your friends when how did the characters change from the original script to like their performances or did they change at all were they always kind of those two guys they changed somewhat i mean we've we've known both of them for a long time luke specifically has known both of them for a very long time and actually when we sent them the script um luke sent it to two people dylan and callan and i sent it to two people and we we both just agreed to send it to two of our friends just to get notes actually originally um the difference was is instead of uh, responding with notes the the two of them said uh, i want to I want to do this movie. I want to be in this movie. So then we looked at each other like, well, maybe we can turn this into a, a little indie going film. Going back to the, going? the stupid way men do things. That, that, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, they go yeah. like, I'm in. And you're like, this isn't even happening. Well, yeah, I, guess happening. I guess it's happening. Now we got to commit four years of our life to this. Oh, yeah. so that's... We were having bourbon yeah, yeah, one... it's, it's, it's... We, we were having bourbon one night. We were on holiday with with Callan. Like we've been doing, you know, it was the pandemic. So we've just been road tripping. We we're in this beautiful town in Alabama and we got a little Airbnb, you know, and you had to, you, you know, you just had to, what do you call it, bubble up because of the play mm -hmm. and dylan's on the phone and we've been drinking and dylan was i'm pretty sure he was the first one he's like you know what i think what if you guys just directed it and i'm pretty <laughs> sure that's when we went ah. uh, yeah why not? why not let's do that yeah and uh yeah no one no one said no yeah God help us yeah exactly <laughs> yeah a lot a lot of the making of the film is similar to the film it is yeah. hopefully it doesn't end the same way but um 
<laughs> I'd say they, they, they both bring they both bring really interesting things to their characters. And one of the things like when you're working with an actor, and you know, we've both been actors that like it always is gonna happen is is the you know, by that person living in the space and living with the text, they're gonna make slight changes, they're gonna become something. And I think Callan's discoveries with Woody were we'd actually made Woody a bit more uh, a bit more nerdy, a bit more of a guy mm-hmm. who's like like the kind of person got them to do a bit more history obsessed. And what Callan really found in his in you know his opening uh, speeches and his opening, uh, if you will, his breath was the pain was much more there. And then that became like the road we really started exploring with him. Yeah. And with Dylan bringing that uh, that classic uh, West Side LA like malaise, like stoner guy, kind of cool who gives a shit. And then as he feels the impending you know, seriousness of his situation, Dylan's discovery of this, that, that uh, almost like a switch flipped. And, mm. the, you know, you can see it in his eyes, you can see it in the way he puts his shoulders back and a lot of those choices that he made to have, you know, what, whether or not it's a good thing, have Colin, quote unquote, grow up or take himself seriously mm-hmm. was one of the most like interesting things I thought he brought. And again, we had that in the script, but like we were definitely playing with a world where you have kind of a much more, uh nerdy twitchy fellow who's kind of maybe having a breakdown across from a much more like cool not sure what to do with himself along for the ride because he can't figure out how to get out and yeah what they discovered is actually the much more serious aspect of the film and i think it comes across which is the like both of these people in different ways are hobbled by what happened and also by just their own personalities and then when put into a situation on the one hand they can't get out but the way they explain why they're doing it and where they are now like the way woody goes from like the deep hurt to talking about uh the concept of team colin and the concept of like wanting to be the good guy and the way that colin does the whole like without you know spoiling but colin starts talking about love and talking about Mm -hmm. you know talking about god and talking about like it gets it's it's a really i mean it's it's something you know we've seen this thing 600 times that's something that still brings me uh like great joy and, and as a filmmaker it's like that was like the really cool aspect of like watching not only our friends but these these talented artists do their craft at that level it was really cool yeah and colin's uh the character of colin dylan sprouse's character his arc um going from kind of chill and not taking as seriously to very much growing into his own by the end and defining himself as serious in whatever way uh he does that uh not to speak on behalf of dylan but just repeating some things that he said and some press stuff in the past um he relates to that character and that arc in the sense that, you know, he's very famous for a role that he did as, as a child and growing up. And I think that kind of sticks Mm -hmm. with you as a person. And I think people kind of assume that you are that person when they meet you out in public and that you're, you're still from like this kid show, but he's a, he's a full grown man. He's married. He's going to have kids soon. And I think there's the, there's that, that arc that, that people go through where it's like, well, I'm not a child anymore. And Mm -hmm. uh, I think Colin's character goes through that where he takes responsibility for, his actions and he decides that he's going to take things more seriously if he wants to be taken more seriously and that there's a relationship between the two of those. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait for everyone to get to see the movie. I can't wait to see you guys make more movies about the dumb shit men do. Um, and thank you so much for talking with me today. Yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah thank thank you. you. Thanks for your time. Of course. Thanks guys. Have a great one.